Hey everybody, Resident Lizard Jeremy here, and I know you guys have been asking for it for a long time, so let's finally do a studio tour. Huh? Why not? Let's go. So I'm gonna try to do this with a gimbal and mostly handheld. I apologize. I've never done a video like this, so this may be a train wreck. Typically I would start outside, but it is like minus five outside, so I'm not gonna go outside. So we're gonna start in the lobby. But let's be honest, the lobby's not what you're here for. So real quick, we're just gonna blast through this thing. This is a spot where people can hang out real quick, do whatever they wanna do. Quick shot of the office, which is a mess, where all the business happens. Now we're in the fun stuff, the live room. This is a room you guys have seen a lot of um, in different forms and whatnot, but I'm gonna try to show it to you in a way you haven't really seen. So the live room is constantly changing. Most of the time there's a drum set set up here because I do a lot of stuff with band. Right now, there is no drum set in here because I had a choir, um, as well as some other string stuff going on. So looking at it from this perspective, kind of have Keys Town. This is Keys Town right here. I always have a Rhodes set up because Rhodes is just awesome. And then this is a new one to the family. The Complete Control 88 key weighted. That's a fantastic keyboard uh, and players really love it. So there's the light wall everyone is always asking about. And if I'm being totally honest with you, it's just two pieces of MDF, commercial string lights uh, put through the back of them. Uh, it's a really cheap way to make a really cool piece and, and bands tend to really like it. So you can also see some amps over here. have a quotient residue diffuser that's just just kind of blocking any weird frequencies that kind of build up in the room because it is a smaller room as far as live rooms go but that may be expanding and I'll get more into that later uh, one thing I do want to mention uh, that's really really handy if you have a smaller room building panels like this that's right behind the keyboard uh, and I have a few of these floating around the studio just movable gobos packed with uh, sound insulation that you can put in between instruments or cut down on reflections or in the case of drums, if you set up the drums where I would normally set them up, put one of these anywhere in the room and then a mic behind that, you can get a really big room sound that you might otherwise not get. So looking in here real quick, this is one of the ISO booths that right now, that right now is just storage, it catches amps and right now the drum set's in here because like I said, we had a choir. Moving on to the vocal booth, which if you guys don't know the layout, let me spin around so you can get your bearings. Entering vocal booth. In the vocal booth, there's pretty much always a manly reference cardioid setup. Um, I just love the way this mic sounds. That does get changed out for other mics occasionally, but that is typically the mic that wins, um, especially if you want like a modern sound. I know a lot of people like 87s. It was never my favorite sound. I feel like I can do a lot more with that manly. One of my other favorite vocal mics is always set up here at the studio. This guy, the R44. This mic is something truly special and it always stays set up because of that. It's always on a drum set as like an overhead or even a kick mic. It's fantastic as long as you're very, very careful with it. Sounds great on acoustic guitars. Sounds just fantastic on a vocal. If you need that intimate sound, it's perfect. Let's go to the control room. So here's the control room that you guys are awfully familiar with and just talking down the desk real quick. On one side I've got the preamps where the top of it are cappy preamps. That's like what used to be called classic API. They're not quote unquote API. They are cappy preamps. Uh, VP28s I think. I have eight of those. I love those on the drum set. Those are followed by two Vintec 573s which are kind of Neve style preamps. Followed by one that's pretty rare. Five Fish Studios uh, MX5 which is a really, really cool company if you want to check them out. Nobody really, I don't hear much about them, but they make fantastic stuff. Then below that, you'll see a Focusrite ISA 828. That's just a good set of really clean preamps that just work well on just about anything. And then below that are my favorite, the Brent Avril, vintage Brent Avril, um, told the one with the cursive are from old Neve consoles. Uh, the one on top is a 1084, which I love, and then two 1073s. And then below that is just an extra bag of eight cheap Digimax preamps for talkbacks and whatever else I need. 
Now the other side of the desk is filled with compressors. One of my favorites, the Distressor, it's kind of the Swiss Army knife of compression. Um, there are better sounding compressors out there, but no compressors that I know of that can do as many things as this one can, as quick as this one can. And it's just become one of my favorites. I use it on my vocal chain every single time I record a vocal. I love it. Right below that is the TSL-4V um, by Inward Connections. It's kind of like an LA-2A type of thing. It's a tube compressor, sounds fantastic on bass guitar or vocals when you need to get really intimate with it. Down below that, the Manly Elop, another tube compressor that I just love on guitars. It's just the sound of guitars to me. It's like an LA-3A type of thing going on. Not quite as squishy as the TSL-4, a little more like mid four aggression in that one really tames those high frequencies which on guitars you just don't really want below that there is an empirical labs fatso that was modded by kush audio one of the most vibey compressors i have ever used and i love it it sounds good there's nothing it doesn't sound good on and it's one of those compressors you really cannot mess up so if you're gonna have one mix bus compressor that would probably be it it's just so easy to use sounds great on everything and it's never too much Below that is kind of my secret sauce for my mix, mix bus, the Neve Master Bus Processor. It's on every single mix that I've ever done since I got it. It's fantastic. It really does something really special to the signal and I haven't been able to reproduce it with a plugin. Um, the day that happens, I'll be fine with it and I'll sell this thing because it's expensive. <laughs> Over here in the wall, we have the burl converters along with the patch bay. I'm gonna do another video on the patch bay because a lot of you have been asking good questions about routing uh, and I want to spend some time on that. So we are gonna go over that. But for those asking about the burl converters or my interface, basically the burls are my interface. Um, I'm running Pro Tools Ultimate and then using the burls for conversion. So essentially the burls are my interface. Over here we have amp rack. And in the amp rack, you'll see my favorite one, the Dr. Z prescription extra strength. I love that amp, it just sounds awesome. Followed by the PRS Archon, which has a really, really underrated clean channel. I feel like it's very well known for its high gain stuff. Um, and it does that really, really well. Uh, right below that is the Mesa Mark V. That amp can kind of stand on its own. It's definitely an expensive amp, but really you're kind of getting like nine amps because there's three different channels and then each one of those has three different circuits and it's just crazy the versatility that that amp has. Below that is the Kemper. A lot of amps come through here that aren't mine and I get to profile a lot of those amps and I love it. I know there's talk of the Quad Cortex coming out which is very, very exciting. And any ability I would have to profile something more accurately is always a welcome addition in the family here. So for right now, I think the Kemper is a great little unit even though it is getting on 10 years old I still use it all the time. Anytime I play live, I'm taking the Kemper. I'm not taking amps anymore. I don't have to worry about somebody stealing it. I don't have to worry about losing anything if there's a power failure. All my stuff is saved on a flash drive and it's light to carry around. I could take you guys to the lounge. In one of my other videos, I have talked about getting some water damage recently. It's getting taken care of. So now we're in the lounge. This is just a comfortable spot where people can kind of hang out, unwind during a session. Just meant to be a comfortable spot where people can chill. There's coffee, there's a TV, couches where you can just hang out. It's nice to have a good spot to go. So guys, there you have it. There's a quick studio tour for you. Like I said, I, because the studios just recently had some water damage, mostly on the lounge side, there will be some changes that I'm gonna be making. Uh, I'm still deciding if it's gonna be a small change just to the lounge itself, or if it's gonna be kind of a larger change where I have the chance to expand the studio into that space and really like almost double or triple the effective studio size that I have available to me. Still making those decisions, there's a lot. But this is effectively still the same studio it was when I had it. I, it's constantly a DIY project. Me and my family are constantly making changes to it as we go. The way I see it, I learn as I go. And I'm making changes the more I learn about the space. And I've had this for nine, 10 years, constantly changing things. And the way it is now, the general layout of the studio hasn't been changed since we built it because had a shoestring budget to do it and we got it done. The little changes and improvements I've made along the way have done a lot for the space. That may be changing pretty recently. So let me know what you guys think about expanding the effective studio. Is that something you would do? Or should I keep it to what I know works?
Let me know if there was something I didn't cover that you want me to cover. Let me know if there's something you want me to go into more details about. If there's anything else you want me to dive a little more into as far as like general pieces and why I chose some certain things, that's fine, but I don't wanna make this video too long. So anyway, guys, I hope you like this. I hope the studio tour gave you some insight. I hope my ability as a cameraman was uh, not terrible. Anyway, guys, I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. If you like this one, hit that like button. If you want, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell, because sometimes I go live, we do mixed tutorials, we do weird one mic experiments. We talk about life in the music industry and how to maintain meaningful relationships in an industry like this. I had fun. Hope you guys did too. I'll see you guys in the next one.